G'day, it's Prezzo here and welcome back to episode 7 of the Stuart number 8 mill engine build. Where I'm going to make a start on the piston first up today. The drawings here show that this casting needs to be inch diameter and 3 eighths of an inch thick. Now, I just did a quick check with my calipers and that's showing up as 379.5 inches or 379.5 thou. So I'm not used to working on in inches, but I'm guessing that's about uh, one and a half thou to be taken off both sides of that rough casting. So you tell me how much chance have I got of cleaning that up completely? I'm not sure. Does it make any difference if we go under size? Maybe we'll have a slightly bigger cavity at both ends of the stroke when the engine's assembled. So. I'm going to try and get that to 3 eighths of an inch, but if I don't, I can't imagine it's going to make a big difference on the performance of the engine. I have to drill and tap 4BA through the center of the piston to uh, take the thread on the end of the piston rod. And it's going to have to be fitted to a mandrel to finish all of the machining. So I'm not quite sure how that's going to work out. So let's get over the lathe, stop sitting around, there's work to be done. Well, did you notice I cleaned up my lathe? No, probably not. But it was looking a bit disgraceful, so I've given it a good clean and oil everything. I've had this lathe for about 18 years. It's a Colchester Student Mark II. Um, I purchased this lathe for $300. And uh, we were having some lathes delivered from a training college down south. They arrived on the back of a semi-trailer. And there was this lathe on the curb side of the truck and two other lathes stacked alongside it. The forklift operator went to remove the lathe on the, the road side of the truck and bumped it with the tines and it was like a stack of dominoes and the coal chest ended up being to toppled off the truck onto the grass curb. The forklift operator just looked at me and he said, geez, sorry mate. And that was it. So when we picked the lathe up, the um, chip tray at the back of the lathe was uh, bent inwards. The lower chip tray was bent back toward the gearbox. The um, headstock guard was smashed into about six pieces. It also bent the lead screw on the cross slide and snapped the handle off the cross slide. So uh, because of the damage to the uh, chip tray and also to the headstock guard, which exposed all the gears, it was deemed that this was unsafe to use. So I put in a bid for $300 and I got it. Anyway, let's get busy on the piston. So what I need to do here is to mount this piston in three door chuck and try and get it running as true as I can. Remember I don't have a lot of machining allowance, almost got nil. So what I'll do is use the tail stock barrel just to push that into the chuck jaws which are only done up very lightly and, and just check to see how close I've got that running uh, true in the chuck. And then I'm just going to face it take off the absolute minimum. So I can see the part being pushed back into the chuck jaws, so I'm just going to tighten it a bit more. So the tail side barrel is just making contact with the outside edge of the piston. Let's just check that, see how close we are. Alright, that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to use a carbide insert just to take the face off that. still a bit of casting skin left on that. Oh, I think I'm just going to take off another two thou. And there's still a little casting defect around here. Like I say, I can't afford to take off too much, so I'm just going to call it quits there. So I'm going to send a drill and tap that 4BA. I've got a 4BA tap mounted on a tailstock holder and no matter how hard I try it's always really difficult to get these threads to be absolutely concentric. 
with the part. So I'm not 100% confident that this piston's going to run true on its rod. And the thread's a bit flimsy really. It should be something bigger than that. Because the next step is going to be to remove this from the chuck and fit it to some sort of a mandrel to machine the upper side and also the outer diameter and the grooves for the piston rings. So it's a lot of machining to be done on essentially a, a very flimsy thread. So I think I'm going to be relying on some CA glue to hold this onto a much bigger mandrel. One thing I don't want to do here is to bust this tap. If I do, you're going to hear some bad language, I guarantee it. By the way, this is not a taper tap either. This is a second tap or an intermediate, which is why it's a bit heavy going. All right, that's right through. Okay. I don't know if you can see there's a few little defects there. The uh, recess in the cast face of the piston is not concentric, but I'm not bothered about that. So on the other side, once again, I'm going to take off just the tiniest amount. Uh, this is showing already undersized. That's 374 thou. And it's supposed to be 3 eighths, so already undersized. So it's going to be just really just really skimming that just a thou or two okay let's make a mandrel Okay, so that's going to give me enough length now to thread that 4BA and I have to do something back here to undercut this so that it, it does wind right back onto that face. Not sure how I'm going to do that yet. So I've got a 4BA die in a tailstock die holder. So I want this thread to be as concentric as I can get it. I mean, ideally this should be thread cut in the lathe, but such a tiny little thread. The biggest issue here is that the, the die can wander off, and this is really all that keeps that piston centralised on its piston rod. Alright, so we've got a thread there. And I need to cut some thread relief because this is not going to back up onto that surface. So uh, I'm going to just do a little bit of jiggery pokery here and try and get some thread relief at the back without weakening that thread too much. Okay, I can feel that pushing up hard against that back face surface there, so I'm happy that that's working. I'm going to put a centre drill mark in here so I can support that with a tailstock centre. I've got a tiny little centre drill. Uh, anything I can do to make this more rigid is going to help. So I cleaned that with some alcohol. I did the same with the face of that turned part there, just to give this CA a fighting chance. I'm only going to put three spots on here. As soon as this butts up against that face, it's going to spread out anyway. Okay, that's hard up against there now, so we'll let that cure a bit. 
and then it's just going to be a matter of gently does it, gently does it to get this diameter right. Right, here we go. So I've got to get just the bare minimum off this face here to clean it up. Well, there's still a little bit of uh, casting skin on that. And I guarantee we're already under size. Yeah, 3715. So, around about 3,000 under size. Oh, I'm just going to leave it there. That's fine. Okay, so now we're going to do this outer surface here. Got to get this down to inch, say, less a thou. It's, you're probably going to laugh at the really light cuts I'm taking here, especially with carbide. Um, I may, I might do this with high speed steel, I think, and that way I can take it really slow. Carbide doesn't like taking light cuts low speed. So the, um, the idea is if I drop speed and use high speed steel, I can take light cuts and it's going to exert less in terms of force on the part. That's my theory anyway, and I'm sticking to it. Okay, so far so good. I've uh, got that cleaned up right across the uh, edge of the piston there now. And still got a fair way to go in terms of uh, diameter, so I'm not going to bore you with doing all of that on camera. I'll, we'll come back when I'm close. Alright, you'll have to excuse me working in both metric and imperial here, but I just want to double check. Um, I've got a, a really good Michitoyo micrometer, but it's metric. And I'm reading that piston at the moment at 25.45. The bore gauge that I used on the cylinder bore is giving me 25.4. I also use my calipers. These are reading in inches. So I'm getting 3,000 over size. 3,000 metric. Alright, so I'm I reckon I'm close. So I haven't touched the cross side at this point. So I'm guessing I'd take off 3,000. So let's do 3,000. All right, that's just just sliding on. So I'm just wondering how much clearance I'm supposed to have. Uh, I'm going to shoot for say half a thou clearance. Maybe one. Don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure that's right. The piston ring is going to take up all of the clearance, so we're relying on those to give us a steam tight fit. Alright, so the next bit, and the bit that I'm not looking forward to, is cutting the grooves for the piston rings. So I'm going to get the rings beside me so I can check the fit. And we're going to have to use a narrow parting tool to be able to do this, and oh, it's going to be fun. Okay, so here's the setup. I've got a very narrow uh, parting blade, which is ground from high-speed steel. It's short, so it should be fairly rigid. I'm going to bring that tool in against the face of the piston, and bring the tool up against this piece of shim stock or feeler stock. This is um, 0.05 millimeter. So once I've got that, I'm setting my micrometer collar on the compound slide to zero. And we can withdraw that. The, uh, as I say, that I'm not sure if I told you, but the tip of that parting tool is 77 thou. So I'm going to wind the tool along 77 thou. OK, that puts this edge. Uh, the one closest to the camera, this edge here, uh, aligned with the face of the piston. The drawings show that we need to have a one-eighth wide groove. 
the piston itself is 3 eighths of an inch give or take so I should have 1 eighth to the edge of the, the groove closest to the tail stock and then uh, 1 eighth wide cut. Right, so that's zeroed out there. So now it's a matter of uh, getting the feed and the speed right. So I'm thinking that we're going to go fairly slow with this. Alright, it's a little bit strange. This uh, piston ring is only 44 thou thick and yet the drawings show I need to go 330 seconds on an inch deep with that groove which is what 93 thou so I don't know that seems a bit excessive um, alright I'm thinking I'm going to go 60 thou it's, I can't see any reason for going deeper than that there's just no point well, I've increased the speed one notch so we'll, we'll shoot the 60 thou deep That's 60 thou. And that, that puts the ring well below the surface there, so I really don't know why we need to go so deep according to the drawings. I'll go 70 thou, we'll leave it there. So if I now go across another 48 thou, that should give us the correct width. Okay, that's that's a a nice fit. You know, I wouldn't say it's sloppy or loose, but there's a tiny bit of clearance there, so that's good. Just before I remove all of this from the mandra, I think I will face off this little lump in the center, center of the piston there. I don't know what happened there, but my tool is now way too low. All right, that's well, a problem. I can't get a grip on that. I'm sure it's hot enough. There you go. All right, so finished piston, now make the rod. Okay, so the piston rods are fairly straightforward turning operation. There's uh, 4BA thread, both ends, and it needs to be machined fairly precisely to length. So I've got a ER40 collet chuck in the, the lathe, and we're just going to work on one end at a time, and then finish it at the correct length. Okay, so our 4BA thread has to be 3 sixteenths an inch long. Okay, I'm going to turn that die around and use the other side of the die to finish. The die has two sides. It's got one side that has a certain amount of lead and the other side, the, the actual teeth come pretty close to the surface of the die. Okay, 
Okay, you can see the dies cut right up to the shoulder now. So, I'm just going to put a tiny bit of chamfer on that. There's actually raised a burr right where the, the end of the thread is on the 316 stymed uh, silver steel. So, let's cut some chamfers there. This thread is a short one and it goes into the crosshead. But I just want to check the fit. Yeah, it's a bit looser than I would have liked. you do this but uh, what I always do in a situation like this is I set my calipers to the dimension shown in the drawing which in this case is two and five sixteenths of an inch once I set the caliper I zero it and I measure the length of the part that shows me the amount that has to come off to bring it to size so in this case 325 thou give or take so I'll put this back in the collar chuck and then set the tool back up against the surface I just machined nearly always draws the stock in to the collar chuck so I'm just going to check that yep. so that's moved in a bit so I'll bring my tool back up against that surface and zero my DRO but I'm also going to zero my cross side collar just as a double check and then we can go ahead and machine back the, the amount so it was 325 thou we're going to take off. Oh, I've just made it. What's that? That's close enough as far as I can tell. So I'll machine the other thread now for the piston and then we're done. Okay, this one, this thread will need a little bit of thread relief um, just to ensure that the piston runs right up at the shoulder. So I'll, I'll cut, just undercut that thread a fraction. It's still not there. My work lights become sentient. It just decides to switch on and off. No, it's actually a loose connection. Right, that's not entirely there, but I'm going to leave it. I'll grip this in a collet later on, and I'll drive that piston right in hard. Um, there's probably a tiny little burr there that's stopping. I just can't get enough grip with my fingers. But um, uh, looks to be running reasonably true. I'll just run that piston onto the rod and try it in the bore of the cylinder and it's all looking pretty good. Okay, well that covers all of the operations to manufacture the piston and the piston rod. I did also film the whole manufacturing of the crosshead which started off as a bronze casting and I 
seriously underestimated the amount of time required to make that part. There were lots and lots of operations and it was quite difficult to hold to carry out many of those operations on that part. So I'll cover that in a later episode. In the next episode I'm also going to cover the ancillary operations on the cylinder and the steam chest. Uh, there were lots and lots of holes that need to be drilled for things like the inlet port and the exhaust port. Uh, the drain cocks uh, had to be fitted and threaded into the cylinder as well. So I'll cover all of that next time. Also, I have to make an awful admission. I started work on the connecting rod some time ago. This was also a bronze casting. And there are simply no instructions that tell you the correct uh, steps and the correct order of operations to manufacture this part. It was also very, very difficult to hold. There were no reference surfaces anywhere on the part. And I started work on the, the lower end of the connecting rod and I was trying to be very careful to get the bore for the, the crank pin accurate. And also the thickness of that section, which is split, had to be fairly critical as well. This uh, section of the connecting rod is tapered and uh, it was awkward to machine that and still keep this end centered without a center drill hole at this top end and just getting that was a bit of a nightmare. And uh, yesterday afternoon I was just winding up, it was getting late, uh, I was wanting to finish up but I thought you know what I can get this tapered section all cleaned up and looking respectable and then tomorrow all I have to do is cut the slot and uh, do the, the cross hole for the, the pin and a bit of profiling around this top end. And typically I didn't know where to stop. I sort of kept going, kept going. I uh, really wanted to get this done before I went upstairs for the evening. And I'm pretty sure you can tell where this is heading. But um, after machining all the way up to this circular marked out detail at the top here, I just casually walked back and took a look at the drawing. And then the awful truth hit me. Of course, the awful truth was that this section of the connecting rod below this eye here is meant to be rectangular, and I had machined that to a quarter inch diameter. Uh, I just looked at the drawing, I saw one quarter, and figured that that was cylindrical all the way up to this uh, eye piece here, and stupidly didn't look at the other view at all, uh, which shows that that section is actually U shaped and I had effectively machined away all of this section here so by the time I cut this slot the two side pieces would have just fallen off. So um, with my tail between my legs I left the project for that day went upstairs and just tried to forget about the awful mistake that I'd made. Overnight I realized that in a full-size steam engine this part would have been made of steel in fact probably the whole connecting rod would have been made of steel and there would have been a bronze or a uh, some sort of a white metal bush uh, in this section here at the big end. And um, what I've decided to do is to cut off this end of the connecting rod and keep the lower part which is fine and I'll make a steel section, a tapered section with all of this detail here at the top and just simply join it onto the bearing section. Uh, now not only does this get me out of trouble, but it also will make that particular part look more authentic. Last year I was very lucky I went to the Tower Bridge in London and we were able to go down below the road level and look at the steam pumping engines which were used to raise and lower the bridge up until about 50 years ago I think when they were replaced with electric motors. And this particular connecting rod was beautifully preserved and I was able to see it close up and I figured that, yep, steel is the right material to make that from. So I am going to, as I say, just simply cut this off here. I'll make a steel plate to attach that to the remainder of the, the connecting rod. And hopefully I can salvage my pride a bit and get a, a better looking part into the bargain. So that's the plan. So uh, what I'll do is wind this episode up here now and uh, hopefully at some point in the future you're going to see a much better representation of this particular part. So for now, uh, thanks for all those people who've been watching. 
and uh, I'll see you on the next episode.